Hello and welcome back to THM and it's go, go, go on another video. First of all, let's take a moment for the voice of motorsport, Murray Walker, who sadly passed away early today at 97 years old, a true legend of motorsport and loved by absolutely everyone. Now, today I'm going to be making a few predictions for the coming season or two. I'm going to try and not make them too outrageous, uh, just in case this uh, channel does explode and I get reminded about these predictions, these wrong predictions, every single year until the end of time. Let's jump into it. First up, I believe that Mr. BTCC himself, Jason Plato, will hit that magic 100 wins and then retire the same season he hits the magic big 100. So Jason's in his mid-50s now, so of course uh, by no means a, uh, a young driver anymore. Um, he's been very slowly edging his way towards the back of the grid. Um, obviously still mixing it up there with the big boys. He's taking a win at Brands uh, you know, two seasons ago, so still a very capable racer, but equally... Uh, you know, not as young and perhaps not as quick as he, he was at some point. Um, and he's just one of those drivers which always needs something to, to fight in order to to kind of excel as a driver. I mean, when he, when he's back in 2001, arguably his prime, um, he's racing up against Ivan Muller. Again, great driver, great challenge. When he first joined with Williams, uh, Renault, he had Alain Menu, probably one of the best front-wheel drive touring car drivers ever. Um, and now he's obviously with Matt Neal as well. He had plenty of, of kind of uh, incidents, should we say, um, with him. And when he hits that big 100, I, I genuinely don't think there's anything more that Jason can kind of realistically aim and go for. So I think he's going to hit that 100 and then retire at the end of the season. It'd be a massive loss for touring cars, um, but equally, what a legend the guy is. Secondly, and uh, quite controversially, to be honest, um, I think that Team Dynamics, if you listen to the speculation that's been going around, I think they will not be as near competitive in the coming few seasons as they have been previously. Um, if you read speculation online, and I must say it is purely speculation, there's nothing kind of official that's been released yet, but um, apparently Honda are backing out. And there's another story that perhaps um, Halfords or Uasa may be pulling out as well. Again, I'm not uh, fueling any form of fire. It's purely speculation at this point. But if that is the case, then effectively it's still a family-run team, albeit with obviously help from sponsors like every team. And if uh, Halfords back out, if Uasa back out, if Honda back out, that's a massive loss budget-wise and quite possibly a reason why Dan Kamish isn't back this season. So I think that if they lose that sponsorship, then they will have a very, very tough few seasons unless they bring something else to the table, perhaps a move away from Honda. Who knows? Now I'm getting a bit brave, to be honest. So this prediction is uh, entirely resting on the fact that the last prediction um, will take place. So I believe in a couple of years' time, uh, Team Dynamics will be Rich Energy Team Dynamics and be running uh, Matt Neal, um, which will obviously retire in the near future, unfortunately, and Michael Kreese as well. Now, the reason I say this, of course, alluding to my last point of um, potential sponsors and manufacturers backing out from the uh, from the Honda point of view. Now, interestingly, Creasy, um, as we all know, um, is sponsored by Rich Energy. And also Matt Neal is a brand ambassador from Rich Energy, I believe, as well. And considering that Michael Kreese obviously will have a few seasons under his belt of the new shape Honda Civic, which is what Dynamics run, it would make sense to get a big money backer like Rich Energy um, bring, and bring their driver across, which has experience driving the car that Dynamics will be racing. So, you know, it kind of makes sense if you think about it. Next up is a uh, prediction on my local team, Team Hard. Um, they are literally up the hill from where I live. Um, really fantastic little team, actually, in terms of... Um, kind of fan interaction and whatnot. Really, really great guys and, and can't fault them at all. Um, but unfortunately, the last few seasons, obviously the CC has been um, towards the end of its life for a long time now. They've probably not been as competitive as they want. Um, but now, obviously, they've got the uh, Cupra that they're building, which is, again, a proven touring car. We need the, the TCR spec one. Again, very capable car. Now, a couple, a brand new chassis. And you've got to remember, Sayat, historically, have had brilliant chassis in the touring cars. The Leon was a brilliant car. Now, couple that with Jack Goff, Aaron Taylor-Smith, Glyn Geddy, all really, really strong drivers, with one more still to confirm as well driving the lay-on. I think they're going to be real dark horses uh, this, this time round, this year. Or maybe even not this year, maybe next year, because of course, you've got to remember, it is a brand new car they've got to develop as well. They've basically got to start from the ground up. So in the next few seasons, they're really, really going to be challenging. And uh, when you consider that they've obviously got um, the Infinities as well, of Ash Sutton, Moffat and Carl Bordley, they're a team that are really going places. So I fully expect them to see them challenging for the title. 
um, especially the, the Leon squad as well, within the next few years. Because like I say, you know, I don't want to repeat myself, but Jack Goff, brilliant driver. Aaron Taylor-Smith, great driver. Glyn Geddy, really good driver. You know, even when he was driving the CC, which wasn't the best car on the grid, you know, by a mile, he's still done really well in it. So um, I expect big things from them. And, you know, and rightfully so, because the team have obviously worked really hard to get a new car and all these drivers in. So um, fair play, Team Hard. Next up is a, another kind of dark horse um, prediction, if you like. It's another fairly struggling team over the last few years, performance-wise. Um, that's Sicily Motorsport. Again, very much like Team Haas, had a fairly old uh, chassis on the grid with the uh, A-Class, which, in fairness to him, Adam Morgan absolutely drove the balls off to get some results out of that because, you know, it's not the best car in the world. But they're switching to the 3 Series for next season. Uh, Rear-wheel drive, so obviously it'll take the drivers, uh, Adam Morgan and Tom Chilton, a little bit of time to adjust. But these are championship-winning cars, these, uh, these BMs. They're really, really great, quick, aerodynamic, slippy cars. Now, Tom Chilton's a bit of an interesting one. I'm never going to drive a bash um, on a video because they're all, they're all good, you know. They're not going to be in the premier tier of British motorsport if they can't hack it kind of thing, you know. They're all good drivers and they're all better than I would do around the track. But for me, Tom Chilton, he, when you consider he started when he was 17 as well, back in 2001, he's raced a lot of great cars. But for me, he hasn't quite won enough for me to put him in the top top tier of touring car drivers you know i know he done well when he went to world touring cars and i appreciate that and fair play to him because obviously that's full of star studded names but considering he had that uh ford focus the lpg thing which was ridiculously fast um and a lot of other top top drives as well i kind of expect him to win more races and maybe even win a title um and i think Again, age-wise, he's obviously got some time left in him, but he's not 17 when he was in 2001. So I think he's going to come into this season thinking this is going to be one of my probably last chances to, to win a championship here. We've got a brand new BMW 3 Series, which we know can win races and we know can win titles. And he's got a great teammate in Adam Morgan. So he's got to go for it. And, you know, I sincerely hope he does. Um, prove me wrong, Tom. Go and, go and absolutely smash it. And uh, last but not least um, is a little bit of a, uh, a cop-out, um, in my opinion, in terms of predictions. I've copped right out here, so feel free to absolutely bash me in the comments. Um, but I genuinely think that this year is probably going to be one of the tightest years that we have ever seen in the British Touring Cars. Now, let me take a little bit of time and just run through the names which are on this season's entry list. Now, considering there's still a couple of seats left, um, Team Hard have got one, Team Dynamics have got one to release. Let me just run these through. We've got Shedham, Turkington, Oliphant, Jelly, Butcher, Smelt, Sutton, Moffat, Bordley, Goff, Aaron Taylor-Smith, Glyn Geddy, Jason Plato, Dan Lloyd, Jake Hill, Ollie Jackson, Andy Neat and Sam Osborne, Jack Butel, Chris Smiley, Tom Ingram, Rick Parfit Jr., Adam Morgan, Tom Chilton, Jade Edwards, Josh Cook, and last of all, the Donny himself, Michael Crease. Now, when you listen to those names, the vast, vast majority of those you think can, will, and have won races. Um, all of the cars are good. We've got Civics, 3 Series, Corollas, Infinity Q50s, uh, Cupras, Astras, Focuses, i30ns there's some great spread of cars and honestly looking at the entry list it's probably one of the well-rounded kind of driver rosters if you like that i've seen in years so i'm really looking forward to it as always thank you so much for watching do us a favor on this video please and uh, just comment below what you think is going to happen in british touring cars in the next season next two seasons you know whatever the case may be so i really want to see what us the fans think is going to happen um I'm also kind of not looking forward to putting this out because uh, give it you know a year's time, I've probably got every single one wrong and this is going to age absolutely awfully, but let's do it.